And so here we got an excision. What's wrong with that? Can anyone tell me the diagnosis from here? I'll give you a hint. It's an 80 year old on the scalp. There's one diagnosis. Maybe in real life there's other things, but I love you for thinking of that because I'm really interested in angiosarc, but no. Okay, maybe there's a couple possible diagnoses, but until <laughs> the first and second and third thing you have to rule out when you see this pattern is pink stuff. And look, look up here. This is solar elastosis. This is this guy's normal dermis at 80, okay? In Arkansas, half the people have this. They're old white folks that have been working out on the farm or fishing their whole life, and they're really sun damaged. And their whole dermis is blazed with layer after layer of elastosis, like the polar ice caps 100 years ago when they were really thick, right? And then when you see the elastosis, look, it's going along. It's all blue, 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 blue. Whoa, gone. Now it's pink. No, that's a good thought too, but you're right to notice the lymphocytes. When there's pink collagen replacing elastosis, something has put new collagen down since the person got old, since they got sun damage. It doesn't work in young people or non-sun damaged people, but in blaze sun damaged skin, when you see pink fibrosis replacing dermis, it's either scar or it's regression around the melanoma or it's a biopsy site or it's they picked it and it's healed. Something did that and you've got to figure out what. And in this case, yes, this is desmoplastic melanoma. Pink going all the way down through the dermis, replacing elastosis, replacing much of the collagen, I mean the fat in the subcutis, and all the way down to the, the freaking periosteum, the galea apeneurotica. This is classic. This is what almost every desmo I see on the scalp goes all the way down to the skull, just like this. And they almost always have lymphocytic aggregates. So when you see scar-like stuff on an old sun-damaged scalp and lymphocyte aggregates, that's desmoplastic melanoma until you prove it's not. Do a SOX or an S100, they will stain almost always, and MART and HMB will never stain in pure desmoplastic melanoma. Some desmos um, have mixed areas of, of cellular spindle component or epithelioid regular melanoma component. But when they're purely desmoplastic, um, they will not stain with regular melanocytic markers. And what you'll see is you got the, the background is pink and fibrotic, and usually it's a little faded out here, but usually they have a little mixoid, bluish, bluish mucin and collagen in between the spindle cells. And the spindle cells don't really even stand out until you go to high power and see, look at that. The big hyperchromatic scattered guys, a little bit hard to appreciate the cytology here, but you start seeing large cells scattered about, but many of the cells will be bland and spindled and definitely can have areas that look just like scar, just like neurofibroma. Beware the scar on the old sun damaged scalp. Beware a neurofibroma with inflammation on an old sun damaged head and neck. Beware any spindle thing like that in an old sun damaged person. Just do the S100 of the socks so that you don't miss a Desmo, okay? They can be real subtle. Only about half the cases have in situ over top of that. So that complicates matters further, okay? Um, if you ask a soft tissue pathologist because of referral bias, even fewer cases will have the insight to, okay? But if you find that, that's helpful. The lymphocytic aggregates are so incredibly helpful. Dr. Rapini said lymphocytes are like smart bombs. They can see like the antigens on the cells that we can't see and they go into attack. So it's a useful thing. And see, look at the hyperchromasia. So scattered hyperchromatic cells are really helpful. If you start looking around, usually if you have a big enough sample, you'll find some mitoses. Okay, so scattered mites, scattered hyperchromasia, there's usually perineural invasion. If you get a big deep sample, but on a shave, you won't usually see that. Um, but the lymphocytic aggregates are helpful. And um, telling apart, neurofibromas can have scattered atypia. Telling a neurofibroma with atypia apart from a desmo is one of the hardest differentials. There's different stains. None of them, in my opinion, are totally reliable. We've occasionally had to tell people to re-excise, and we're not sure if it's a neurofibroma or a desmo, but that's a huge differential. Totally benign, totally malignant. These are usually like 15 or 20 millimeters deep when you take them out, but when they're pure Desmo, the behavior is much better on a, a depth per depth basis than other melanomas. Local recurrence is a huge problem. I've seen them grow through the skull, into the dura, outside the brain, patient's still alive, no meds. That's totally a weird different thing than regular melanoma. It's like it's gone back to its neural crest origin, which is why it only expresses SOX and S100 neural markers and not melanocytic differentiated markers like MART and HMB. You wear Desmos. They don't clinically look bad either. They look like scar clinically. So they don't get, the patient doesn't come in. I had one that we published a couple years ago that was a punch biopsy for alopecia, alopecia protocol. They actually even bisected it horizontally and it was scarring alopecia due to desmoplastic melanoma. Clinically, a dermatologist thought it looked like alopecia areata or something. That's scary, right? This isn't like a, somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. Someone who actually knows that this doesn't, didn't even look like a tumor to them. So that's why it's problematic. So they'll think it's a scar or something. You'll think it's a scar. So it's a false clinicopath correlation. You feel like, oh, it all fits, but it all fits wrong. Okay. Be very afraid of Desmo. See, I wrote a lot about it because I'm real passionate about it.